In this video, we're going to use acid-base strengths to predict equilibrium composition. So in the previous video, we looked at um, how we can use the acid-base strengths relative to water to determine a variety of things, like whether an acid is a strong acid or a weak acid, um, whether something will be an acid in water or a base in water, um, and you know what defines a strong acid and what defines a weak acid. So the, the thing with the last video was that all of our comparisons were made with water. So we used water as sort of a reference point. But in this video, we're going to extend that, and we're going to look at what happens when we have uh, two things in solution that are not necessarily water. So water will be around, but we'll also have, a, um, we'll also have an acid and a conjugate base that's in water. Uh, an acid, and, I should say, an acid and a base that's in water, and we're going to look to see if we can figure out what the product should be and um, and how we can determine the relative equilibrium composition. So the first thing we're going to look at is an example, um, and this is uh, the case where we have HClO reacts with Cn minus in water. Uh, predict the products and determine if a reaction favors the products or the reactants. So the first thing we have to do is we have to predict the products. So we have HClO aqueous and we have Cn minus aqueous. Now normally you guys would just um, go about writing the products as follows. You would do your proton transfer where you would have um, HClO uh, gives a proton to uh, the Cn minus and this would give us ClO minus aqueous plus HCn aqueous. But there's actually an interesting question. So this is the correct, the, this equation is correct. But there's an interesting question that arises, and that is, what will the HClO, what should the HClO react with? Should it react with, because there's two bases in, in present, and there's actually two acids present. So remember, there is water present in all of this. So the question becomes, is the HClO going to react with water, or is that one going to be the acid? And is Cn minus going to be the acid, or is water going to be an acid or a base? And what we have to do is we have to go and look at the chart to figure that out. Um, so if we go and take a look at the acid-base chart, what we see is we can mark off where our acids and bases are. So we have HClO, which is here, and we have uh, Cn minus, which is down here. So we have to see what is the, strong, what is the strongest acid in, present in the solution and what is the strongest base present in the solution. Well, in this case, um, since we have water hanging around, our strongest acid is going to be the HClO. So we know that our acid in this case is going to be HClO and not water. Now let's check out the base. So in this case, Cn minus is a stronger base than water. So our base in this case is going to be the Cn minus. It's always worth thinking about this, although generally speaking, you know, water is such a weak acid and um, is such a weak base generally that anything else that's in solution that's uh, even uh, anything else that's in solution that's an acid or base will generally be stronger than it. But this is always a good sort of check to make sure. Because if, for example, H2O was a stronger uh, acid than, uh, than, that, than it, or if H2O were a stronger base than it, then we would have to think about what, what the reaction would, take, would, would be. And I'll actually show you an example of that uh, in a second. So now that we know that our HClO will be the acid and our Cn minus will be the base, we have to go on to um, answer the next part of the question. And, and just a note, when you decide that, that HClO is going to be the acid and Cn minus is going to be the base based on the chart, then you can do your proton transfer and, and that should work out fine. And this is going to give us, you know, our uh, conjugate base pairs. So on the other side, we have our uh, base and we have our acid. And now the second part of the question, which is determine if the reaction favors the products or the reactants. So how can we do that? And the way that I like to think about this is that we have a competition, right? So we have HClO reacting with Cn minus in the forward direction. So that's our forward reaction. And we have uh, HCN uh, reacting with ClO minus in the reverse direction. And so this is like a t almost like a tug of war, or actually it's, it's kind of opposite of a tug of war. It's like two things pushing against each other, and we have to see which one's going to push harder. So what tends to happen is, is that the stronger acid is going to be the one that's going to push harder, meaning it's gonna, uh, the reaction is going to favor or is going to go in the direction of the stronger acid. So the side that has the stronger acid is going to push the reaction 
in the opposite direction. So let me, let me show you what I mean. So first of all, let's identify which acid is stronger in this case. Is HClO stronger than HCN? Those are our two acids. We have one pushing in the right-hand direction and one pushing in the left-hand direction. So let's figure out which one is stronger. Okay, so looking at our chart, one of our acids that's involved in this equilibrium is HCN, and the other one is HClO. And we can see that HClO is a stronger acid than HCN. So uh, HClO is up higher on the chart. It's closer to the strongest acids. And therefore, HClO is going to be stronger than H. Based on the chart, we have HClO is greater than HCN. So now if you think about this, if HClO is a stronger acid and it's pushing in the right-hand direction, and HCN is a weaker acid and it's pushing in the left-hand direction, this reaction is going to favor going toward products meaning the HClO is going to push a little bit harder and favor this thing going toward products. So we're going to have more products in this case than reactants. And that's because HClO is a stronger acid and it's going to push harder than the HCN, which is pushing in the reverse direction. So that's how you can tell first what the products are going to be and then second, um, whether the reaction favors products or reactants at equilibrium. So let's take a look at a second example where we have HClO aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. So in this case, we're going to go back to our chart and we're going to see if uh, which is our, we're going to discover, we're, we're going to look for which is our strongest acid and which is our strongest base. And remember, we always have water present. So that's another thing that we have to check. Let's take a look and see what, where everything is. So we have HClO, and we decided the last time that this was stronger than water. So HClO is going to be our acid. But now the interesting question is, is what will be our base? So in this case, if we look at Cl- and we compare it to water, we see that water is actually a stronger base than Cl-. And we know actually from our, the previous video that Cl- is neutral. So the question is, is will the proton go to Cl- or will the proton go to H2O? And in this case, the proton is going to go to H2O. And the reason for that is because it's the stronger base. So our base in this case is going to be water. So the Cl- is actually just going to be a spectator. So when we write this reaction, it's going to be HClO aqueous as our acid plus H2O as our base is in equilibrium with ClO- aqueous plus H3O plus aqueous. And so this is going to be our conjugate base, and this is going to be our conjugate acid. And if we look up the acid strengths, we're going to discover that H3O plus is a stronger acid than HClO. It's up higher on the chart. So in this case, we're going to favor the reactants, because the H3O plus is going to push back harder against the HClO and uh, it's going to favor pushing the reaction back toward the HClO. Okay, so let's just do one more example. And I, the reason why I like this example is because it gives you the relative acid strengths in a slightly different uh, format. So in this uh, particular instance, what we have is we have the relative acid strengths, but it's listed out as H3O plus is greater than HSO4 minus and so on and so forth. Um, so let's take a look at our reaction. So in this case, the reaction is given to you. You don't have to predict the products. It's already given. And we have to make a decision. So we have, we have to identify our acids in this case. So in the first reaction, our acid is going to be HCN. That gives the proton to uh, the SO4 2 minus. And in the second one, we have our acid is HSO4 minus. So if we compare HSO4 minus to HCN, we're going to find out that uh, HSO4 minus is the stronger acid. So in this case, the reaction is going to favor the reactants. And let's take a look at the second one. So the second one, we have our one acid being H2S and our other acid being acetic acid. So now the question is, is which one of these is the stronger acid? Well, the acetic acid, according to this chart, is stronger than the H2S. So again, that's going to push a little bit harder and we're going to favor the reactants.